Recently, I had the opportunity wow. to take part in a class to build my own ceremonial drum. Uh, the instructor had studied with Native American shamans, and he would take us through the process. And as I was talking with him about the kinds of hides he had available, I realized that I had stumbled on a really rare opportunity. Just the week before, one of my friends who hunts my land had harvested a big buck. Now, I don't hunt myself, but I do believe that if we consume meat, Doing our best to find local, ethically raised and sourced meat is really important, and hunting our own is the gold standard of that. I know that my friend Gene likes to use as much of the deer as possible, so I reached out to him right away to see if he still had the hide, and sure enough, he did, and he was hoping to give it to someone who could use it, and I was happy to be that someone. So this video isn't a how-to video at all, but I do show a lot of images of the process that I went through to prepare the hide to make the drums. So some of them, as you can imagine, are a little icky. If you are sensitive to that, I suggest that you stop and pause now. Um, otherwise, if you always wondered what it would be like to do that kind of a, a project, I think that this is gonna answer a lot of your questions. So jumping right in. I was home the morning that Gene got his deer. Um, he was very excited. He came down to the cottage and wanted to show me and kind of reenact the whole process. So I got my winter gear on and went up into the woods with him. He showed me where his deer stand was. He had gotten this deer with a bow and arrow. Um, we walked the path. I never realized that the deer did not die immediately, but there was a path and Gene had me find the trail until we finally came to the deer itself. It is kind of difficult. Um, I believe wholeheartedly in trying to live off the land and as close to nature as possible, but the hunt is never really easy, is it? My father was a hunter, so I grew up around that, but uh, still, that morning with Jean and the deer, I learned quite a bit. Nonetheless, as we came up to the deer, I took a moment, I put my hand on his neck and just said a little something, a little prayer to send him on his way. I helped Gene load the deer into his truck, and then that was the last of it, until the next week when I went back to Gene's to get the hide. And Gene had started the process of um, cleaning the hide for me uh, and taught me how to finish it off myself. The first step, of course, is to get all of the muscle um, off of the skin. And there is a layer of connective tissue right beneath the skin um, that kind of fibrous tissue that you see when you do work with meat and roasts and that really is firmly attached to the skin and that can make it really difficult uh, to get the muscle off. I'm sure there possibly is a much easier way to do this. I'm no expert uh, but for us it was just good old-fashioned elbow grease and hard pulling. So I did get most of the muscle and most of the connective tissue off. The skin is very soft and elastic at this point. There's still a high moisture content. Now, of course, in this case, using it for a drum, I wanted all of the fur off as well. So the next step was to soak the hide in a solution. I mixed a solution of hydrated lime and water. It's kind of hard to find this time of year, but I found a couple bags of it and soak the hide in this solution for about a week and checked it every so often to see if some of the hair would pull out um, and after about a week it seemed like the hair was coming out pretty easily so I took the hide out and rinsed it it's super heavy a wet hide like this I would guess it probably weighs about 50 pounds honestly when it's soaking wet and started to pull the hair out I had gotten a tool but the hide, the skin itself is still kind of soft and flexible and it's really easy to poke a hole in it. So I used mostly my hands to pull the hair out. Now, remember, I didn't really know what I was doing with this. So the whole process was a little stressful, stirring up that icky mess in the, the bucket and um, rinsing out this heavy hide and pulling the hair out and I was joking with my son that I wanted to infuse this hide with nothing but positive thoughts and energy and it got really hard to keep my thoughts positive as this tedious process continued but finally I did get all of the hair out and um, stretched the hide over I found some old racks and just kind of strung it up to stretch it as it dried 
Now, to make the drum, the hide didn't need to be completely dry, uh, but it did need to be a little bit more workable than it was. Like I said, it was still very elastic, very wet, and um, letting it dry over this rack made it more uh, workable for making the drum. Actually using the hide to make the drum was so much easier. Uh, as you can see, we have a wooden frame that the instructor supplied. He also supplied that leather that was cut in um, like a string for me. The leather that I'm using, the hide from the deer that I'm using um, at this point is kind of the consistency. It feels almost like pizza dough. So it's easy to work with. Um, punching holes was a little bit more challenging and um, weaving to create the shape of the drum uh, wasn't really, compared to the rest of it, a difficult process. So weaving the back, you have a choice of making different designs. The back part, of course, with the threading is where you're going to hold the drum. And uh, I chose to use a design that kind of emulated a tree. I don't know if it looks like a tree to you, but that's what it's supposed to be. After this process is done, the drum has to dry for several days, probably about three or four days. And I've noticed that even after that, for the next month, it continued to dry and cure, and the sound as you beat it um, got deeper and fuller and richer during the next month or so. So it, the drying process isn't quick. You're not ready to use your drum right away. The last step in the process was to make the beater. And to me, the beater was almost or just as important as the drum itself. I wanted to use local uh, materials for that as well. So I went up into my woods and found the handle uh, from a fallen uh, limb. And the filler part of the beater is leftover fur from the deer hide. I have sped it up a little bit, of course, here. I spent quite a bit of time fussing over this, but I'm very happy with the way that it looks at the end. The drum has had about a month and a half to cure now, and the sound has become deep and rich. Um, there is a little bit of a rattle between the frame and the hide that I'd like to work on. But otherwise, I'm really happy with the drum. Would I do this process again? Would I uh, process my own hide to make a drum? I don't know. It was a lot of work, and um, all I can say is this. I'm happy I did it. I'm happy with my drum. It has a lot of meaning for me, and I hope to use it for ceremony here at Soul Farm.